guys, my name is Bob Lee, and you're watching a review of the Dutch Tier 9 destroyer, Groningen. The Groningen comes with the ship skills Engine Boost 1, DFAA 3, Sonar 1, and the gimmick is Special Air Strikes. The ship is equipped with 120mm Bofors cannons in a 2x2 setup with a 1.75 second reload, 4.5% fire chance, and just under 10 kilometers of range. Now the Groningen has an impressive anti-air suite. The large caliber damage is 227 and the large, small caliber is a 255. So let's take a look at this ship. The Groningen is actually the Friesland's Metal sister ship, starts. but don't be fooled. This thing is nothing like the Friesland in the playstyle. Where the Friesland gets four smokes, the Groningen doesn't get smokes Instead it gets a engine boost and it gets airstrikes. The Groningen, although a lot like the Friesland, it is the sister ship. It, in my opinion, requires a lot more skill to play since you don't have your smoke. And in my opinion, a lot more fun experience for me at least, uh, since you really have to be careful of how you position and which targets you shoot at. Whereas in the Friesland, you just pop your smoke and Enemy you burn down everything in your range, which kind of makes it OP. I do not think the Groningen is OP though. I think the Groningen is in a Enemy great place where it is. Yes, it's extremely good at lighting fires, and that's what the main thing about this ship is. You want to light fires. It doesn't have torpedoes like the Friesland, so you gotta make do with what you got. Now, luckily, your guns are exceptional. You can see the dispersion and the fire chance is very good. 4.5% on guns that reload this fast is really good. And now, when you combine this with your airstrikes, you can get a lot of fire damage. Now, in this game, I was playing against some uh, German BBs, and as you know, they are great for burning. They light on fire very fast, and in this game, we are going to get a lot of fire damage. We hit the enemy. So, while I was playing the Groningen, I... Well, I wouldn't say I had a hard time, since the ship is very maneuverable, and it's easy to dodge. As you saw my setup, I wasn't actually using any maneuverability traits, only the engine boost and surface detection. And of course, reload. And that's because I know how agile these ships are in the right hands, and when you can maneuver your rudder, and your engines, you can dodge almost anything. Now, there was a game where I met two Smolensks, and you will see this later. And that's when you really wish you're in a Friesland, because when you get in too deep in this ship, it's very, very tough to get out, and you have to be on your toes 100% just to survive. You have to dodge everything, and when there's two the Smolensks shooting at you, yeah, you're pretty much done. Now we are against the Kabarovs here, and I'm also quite far out on the flank. Um, so we're gonna turn back in to, you know, contest the caps since they have everything. You don't have a radar on the Friesland, so... I'm sorry, the Groningen. So you gotta make do with the sonar here. The AA on this thing is absolutely nuts. It's, uh... Well, it's not the best AAs, uh, you know, in top two, but it's definitely up there. It's just as good as the Friesland, and... It rivals, I mean, even the Holland, I would say. Now, it's not as good as the Holland, but it's definitely good. And here you can see the Groningen's AP just unloading on this cover here. The precision is insane. You can see the dispersion, it's, it's very good. I'm hitting every single shell, almost. You know, not to pat my own head. So, when you're playing the Groningen, you don't want to play it like a Friesland. You don't want to just go into the middle of the cap and smoke up since you don't have smokes. I found while playing this ship that I was much more focused on helping my team than I was, you know, getting damage. I think my average damage in this ship is maybe 40,000, uh, 60 maybe, I'm not too sure, I haven't checked. But I didn't get a lot of big damage games, this is probably the only one I got in 10 games. But I did always, almost always, manage to get max team points. Since this thing has such a short surface detection, on my build I have a 5.45 kilometers. You rival Shimakazes, you rival pretty much every other DD in scouting, so on that department you're doing very well. So you want to be moving around all the time, you can't just be sitting stationary. You have to dodge, you have to kite, you have to do everything in your power to preserve your HP. And so far as you can see we've done pretty well at that. 
the Schlieff and, you know, secondaries, they will have a hard time hitting me if I just dodge actively. And we take him out with ease with the help of our teammate. So now we're going to move back into the cap and as you can see we pretty much have map control now. Now the gimmick of the Groningen compared to the Friesland is you get airstrikes. And you saw me use them in the beginning of the game. You only get one strike per you know, cooldown. You don't get two or three airstrikes, you only get one. And there's eight bombers on plane. So you, you do, you know, you get a big package and it's quite easy to hit. If you're aiming for battleships that is, which you should be. It's, it's pretty good, but to be honest, it's not the main focus. Having the airstrikes is just to make this ship different from the Friesland. The playstyle is somewhat the same, but you're just a lot more inhibited by the fact that you don't have a smoke. And that's what this makes this ship so much harder than the Friesland. So should you get this ship? Well, in my opinion, if you want to have a lot of fun and just really be an evil sadistic dude, play the Friesland. You might as well just play the Smolens. I mean, you just sit in the smoke and you light people on fire. That is fun. I mean, sometimes. It, it really, to be honest, it's great fun. If you want to improve yourself as a destroyer player, as a gunboat player, and you want to learn the games, how to survive longer in a DD, I'd say this is the ship for you. I mean, the, the odds in the crate is 4.5%, so it's a lot better than it usually is. And, but you know, just wait for this thing to come out in a bundle or in the shipyard. It's 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 not that special of a ship that I would spend a ton of money on it. Although I had my fun, I would say you know if you, from an objective perspective, you know, just looking at it objectively, the Friesland is much better because of the smokes, and it still has the same AA as the Groningen. But this thing is more. I would say skill focused. You really have to get your dodging down. You have to know when to reverse. You have to know when to turn. And most of all, you gotta know which targets you can attack and which you can't because you cannot just disengage. Now with a surface detection like this thing has, of course you can get out of you know, combat very easily. But as you will see in the next clip, um, I definitely wished I was in a Friesland when I was against these two Smolensk. I mean, that was just me. So we're gonna take out this midway here and I'm gonna get my 100k. So I was pretty satisfied. You know, I'd say it compared to the Freezer, this thing is way more fun to play. It's it's much more hit and run, cloak and dagger play style. You weave in and out of combat and it just feels a lot more action packed. So here we are in the next game. And this is a game where we had a full-on try-hard division on the enemy team with Dr. Smolensk and Columbus. So currently we are halfway through the game. We just killed their CV who forgot he was going forward. Happens sometimes, so you know, you gotta capitalize on it. And I was thinking to myself, double Smolensk, I can't really go towards those guys, but I kind of wanted to test and see, you know, how can this thing actually dodge? How good is it at disengaging? So I'm opening up with the first Smolensk here. I missed my first airstrike and... Yeah, it's not easy hitting Smolensk and Minotaurs, so I, I would just not bother, to be honest. I swapped to the AP because I know the AP is great. When you're against a DD in the Groningen or Friesland, use AP. When you're against a BB, use HE. And when you're against light cruisers like this, I would argue using AP AP is not a bad idea. So now you see both the Smolensk are opening up on me and they are very close to hitting me. I luckily get my speed boost and now I just need to get away. So you see I'm constantly turning, Enemy constantly, you know, reversing, not reversing, you know, turning the other attack. way. I want to throw off their aim. I want them to sink. Okay, now he's turning in. And then they, you know, and then I turn and they miss. Luckily now we are undetected, but look at our HP. 328. That's not a lot of HP, man. So at this point, you have to recognize as a DD player that you can't engage anything right now. Luckily, there's no CV in this game, but I can bet you that if there was a CV in this game, he was going for me. And with this HP, no amount of AA can actually save you, I think. So there you see, I got a good amount of damage on the Smolensk. So the bombs, when they do hit, they do a ton of damage. And the fire chance is high. 
So it's 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 very good when you do hit them, and when you see those unsuspecting targets, a you know, Bowen, Richelieu, or whatever it is, you know, something that's stationary, definitely Our use those bombs. Our team is about to so win. this is pretty much the game. I just wanted to show you guys that this thing is not easy to disengage it. You really have to be decisive on which targets you want to attack. If you see two Smolensks, do not attack them in the running. It's just suicide. And I knew that, but you know, got a limit test. So there we go. I did not get the MVP, but let's just see 300 score, uh, team score. That's also good. All right, guys. So that was pretty much my video on the Groningen. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you liked the little 3D animation in the beginning. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. So there's not much else to say than uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's been Bob Lune and signing off.